going to be a fully playable character in the game. Um, this was something really exciting for us. We wanted to let players play someone who's quite different from Batman, someone who has different abilities and kind of a different goal and objective. So we felt Catwoman was a really cool character. She's got her own gadgets, all her own animations, all her own moves, her own way of getting around the city. So you know, it was a real chance to do something quite different to what you get to do as Batman. This scene that we're seeing here, how... Uh, where, where, what point in the game does this take place? So this is really on, early on in the game. It's one of the first things you'll see. So we have a group of Two-Face guys uh, who are basically protecting this safe and they're waiting for Two-Face to turn up. And basically the story, Catwoman's story, mainly revolves around this running feud that she's got with Two-Face. Nice. So the first thing she's going to do is break into this area and she's going to try and steal back these plans for, that Two-Face has got. And you can see here, uh, Jez is pulling off some great moves, takedowns, different uh, attacks that she can do. She's got the whip that she can use to stun. There's an aerial attack that she can do. She can use uh, aerial trip, sorry, a whip trip as well, a beat down where she can do a focused attack on one person. Uh, floor sweep, so lots of really cool, unique moves just for her. And she's got her own gadgets as well, like cow chops that she can drop on the floor to trip people up, bowlers that she can throw. So, you know, she's a really cool character. I've got to say, I've got to say for the folks watching at home, we got big crazy HD streaming and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure they see it as good. This game looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, the guys, what they've done, I think, you know, what the uh, the art team, what the technical guys have done is amazing. That we've, you know, we tried to take all that love and care and attention that we did for Arkham Asylum. Yeah. But kind of writ large on the the kind of cloth of Gotham, so really scale everything up, but still keep that same level of detail. You know, so the challenge for us that we set right at the start is. What's going to be really exciting? What do we want to do next? Let's take Batman into Gotham, you know? Let's take Batman into Gotham City. But what's going to be really cool about that is, well, let's, what, what would be the biggest challenge for Batman in Gotham City? So we kind of walled off this district. And basically what's happened following the events of the first game is that Quincy Sharp, who was mayor of Arkham Asylum, he's declared that Arkham Asylum wasn't fit for purpose. So he's closed down Arkham Asylum. He's walled off this huge district of Gotham and basically just thrown all the people from Arkham Asylum in here with all of the inmates from Blackgate Prison. So you've basically got this kind of concentrated uh, district of pure super criminality, basically. Just e every single one of Batman's worst nightmares located in this one place. And I think what's quite fascinating is that they're all out to do their own thing. So, you know, what Joker's trying to do is totally different from what Penguin's trying to do. That's totally different from what Zaz is trying to do, you know? So, and as Batman, you know, the only thing that's stopping any of these people getting what they want to do is Batman. But they're all doing different things, so it's a really hard kind of juggling act that you've got to take on as well. So, I think that's what makes it really, really interesting. For me, uh, you know, and I'm sure all the fans that love the first game, uh, you know, it sounds like just the way you explain it, that there's much more content to this one than there was in the first one, is that right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have still our core main story, which uh, you're looking at around about sort of 15, 16 hours gameplay for the core main story. But then on top of that, we have all these side missions that you can do, basically going after different supervillains. And I think if you want to take down all the supervillains inside Arkham City, you're looking at well over 25 hours of gameplay. Wow. So wow. it's a really good, solid amount of gameplay. You can see here actually one of the things that uh, Jez is doing as he plays. He's identifying the Riddler informant. This is a guy who Riddler has paid to give him information and Batman's identified him by cross-referencing with a database of all the different people that he knows that work for Riddler. So what he's going to try and do now is he's going to try and interrogate this guy. He's going to try not to beat him up too much. This is really the skill of this. He's going to try and avoid hitting the guy who's highlighted in green and beat everyone else up in the party and just leave the informant left. So it's quite a skill, it's quite a challenge, and you'll see that when he, hopefully when he does it, it will leave just that guy and he can interrogate him for information on the whereabouts of different trophies in the environment. So one of the things, so you see, yeah, there's the last guy. So he can interrogate this guy now, lift him up, true Batman style. Oh, wow. basically find out what secrets Riddler's placed, uh, paid him to play around to sort of toy with Batman. So that's kind of an idea of saying that sort of off the main path, you don't need to do that if you want to hunt down these different secrets. Kind of Riddler's a bit of a spectre in the game. He's kind of a ghost. He's kind of working behind the scenes all the time. He's not like a, an overt, you know, maneuver like um, 
joker or penguin who's really all about brute force. Riddler's all about being smart, being intelligent. So he's going to try and basically, what he's done is he has a number of different hostages and he's going to try and basically uh, prove that he's smarter than Batman by setting up all of these different puzzles and challenges for Batman. But the game this time is Batman's playing for these hostages' lives. So if he gets it wrong, these guys get killed. Wow. So he's really up the stakes from the first game. You can see some cool secrets here. So one of the secrets uh, Jess has done there, basically you've got these big uh, kind of blast doors that Riddler set up. And you have to use the dive boost, which you've seen as Batman's been moving around. The dive boost is just this great way to get around the environment. We see here as Jez goes up, he uses the grapple boost to flip up off the gargoyle, and he uses that momentum to glide around the city. You know, he can go. This is kind of one of the big features of the game, really, is this momentum gliding. You know, it's probably the thing that actually wastes the most hours in our office. We're all playing the game. You're in meetings, we're talking about designing, and then we just set ourselves these crazy <laughs> challenges to dive through different areas of Arkham City. Another cool move you'll see here is Batman can slide under objects. Oh, cool. So he can actually use that as part of combat, and you've got that trophy there. You can slide under and grab the trophy while you're sliding under the object. Well done, Dark Knight. That's crazy. So lots of different moves. You can actually slide, combine the slide into combat as well, so you can slide, trip people up, combo off of that. So as with the first game and the combat system in the first game, there's loads of different moves you can combo together. You know, and we had that kind of real feeling of we wanted to create this kind of flowing gameplay and extend on that. So all the skills you learnt in the first game, you're going to be able to use here. But then there's like twice as many combat moves that you can move uh, switch in as well. Wow. So loads of different variety in there as well. I mean, when he was working in that crowd of guys down there, when he was avoiding the informant, I mean, I was noticing whether you know whether you call it the animations or whatever. It just seemed like it was there was a lot more going on with what he was doing. There's like over twice as many animations in the game. There's twice as many moves that Batman can do. And I think like one of one of the really cool things is that you know those are all adding to the gameplay as well. You know, like one of the things that we try and do Rocksteady is make a game that's all about the gameplay you know so we're not specialists we're not here to make big set pieces or big quick time events we want to put the game in people's hands we want you to play it and we want you to have fun with it so you know that's what we want to bring here at E3 as well is kind of give people a chance to actually play it for themselves and enjoy it and we're really happy that the kind of feedback from people is you know with, you know, which we really believe as well that this is even better than the first one. You know, I, so I would give you my initial feedback sitting 10 feet away from it for the first time. I will say that the scale already, I'm super excited about the scale, yeah. seeing him fly up and seeing that city and floating around. Um, and then the other thing is that, uh, I, guess I got one personal question I totally got to ask yeah, you. Yeah. I had so much fun with the combo challenges they had in mm. the first game. Yeah. Are those back? Yeah, yeah, combo challenges are back. You know, our challenge maps are back. I can't talk too much about them, but I can sure. tell you they're bigger and better than ever. We've got new features for the challenge maps and they put a whole new spin on it, so you know, you're still going to be able to do leaderboards, challenge your mates, but there's a whole new element in there, which is really cool, you're going to love it. The, uh, I hate to talk over the game at all, I'm sure there's, it's obviously loud for us here on stage, but the folks at home, they probably can hear two faces talking right now. No, I, yeah, I've seen him in the trailer, it's amazing. But one thing I'll ask you as well is, uh, with, uh, with the expanded scale and all the stuff you guys got going on, got going on is it is it is it less of a linear experience then? Do you get to go pick and choose which way you want to go? Yeah, I mean that's one of the great things with the side missions is basically we do have the main thread, so you've still got that kind of focus story that we had from the first game. But as a player, you can pick and choose when do you want to take on the side missions, when do you want to try and track down Zaz, find out what Zaz is doing, you know, when you want to find out what all these other main characters and super villains are doing, and what's their angle in Arkham City? You know, everyone's got an angle, everyone's trying to get something out of Arkham City. Everyone's trying to turn it for themselves. And as the player, you can choose when you want to do any of those side missions. You know, you're free to dive in and out of them, dip in and out of them as you want. So I think that adds a whole new element to the game. And there are some really cool ones in there. You know, there's some great side I don't want to ruin any of them, but like some of my favorite moments are in the side missions because they're really unexpected, you know. So you've got the main thread, but you can jump into these things and you'll find out new things about the game and even about the first game that you didn't even realize were happening. The, uh, the one thing I got to ask you, otherwise I'm sure there's a billion people at home, and I should look at their questions too. Is uh, detective mode? I hadn't seen no detective mode actually with these guys. I mean, we still got detective mode. Um, one of the big things is that you are Batman, so basically, you know, we want to make sure you're still empowered. You're still, you know, you're the goddamn Batman, so you've got to feel like Batman, right? So we're not going to take anything away from the player. You know, we're not going to nerf any of the skins in the player. 
but at the same time we've sort of focused detective mode and we've actually made it more powerful in some ways but for what, what you'll use it for so detective mode is all about hunting down enemies it's all about tracking enemies so when you flip to detective mode you can't see the world quite as clearly but the enemies really pop you pick them out really clearly and then on top of that we have like a surveillance scanner which is part of detective mode which enables Batman to listen to what everyone's saying in Arkham City so it keeps him one step ahead so he can hear all the conversations on the streets that are going on is that like based on like the, the thing that we saw in the movie where he was like with all the crazy yeah kind of like that he's basically amplifying what everyone's talking about and you can get hints and tips about what the supervillains are up to and at the same time you can also hear people talking about what you've been doing and it's kind of a great way to see how how your actions are impacting the greater world as well. And the one thing before uh, we start talking there, you had a bunch of dudes on the street and there was a ton of those guys on the screen. There's more than I ever saw in the first game, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got over twice as many enemies in the fights as well. Wow. So it's something that we really ramped up because, you know, we love the free flow combat system and we got so much positive feedback on it that we wanted to really push that, make, make the next evolution of that. We didn't want to... You know, we didn't want to do something different, but we wanted to take that and evolve it, which is why I say we've got twice as many moves, but twice as many enemies to fight as well. They're coming with new weapons and skills as well, so the supervillains have been watching what you did in the first game, and they're coming back with even bigger things to take you down with. You know? That's incredible. The one thing is, I, as I look towards our chat room, and uh, I will alert the folks at home if you want to get some questions our way, uh, you can do it through Twitter, at GameSpot, or you can also uh, be in the chat room right now. I'm looking at our live... E3 number two room, which is a whole That's ton of you guys in there. Uh, the one question I'll ask what you right now is like, how do you mix it up? Is it, you know, do I play as Catwoman one level, then I go back to Batman, and then vice versa? Yeah. So Catwoman's story is kind of seamlessly interwoven into Batman's story. So you'll kind of move between the characters. Uh -huh. I mean, Catwoman, we've sort of described as a special guest star. So this is, make no mistake, this is still Batman's game. You know, you're going to be playing as Batman for the, the majority of the game. Uh, you know, so she, I'd say you play her for about 10% of like 25, hour, 25 hours plus. So a really good chunk, but it's still Batman's game. And you'll go in and out, and their stories are kind of interwoven. So you'll see how, what they do sort of affects each other. But like I say, Catwoman's taking advantage of the fact that Batman's trying to stop all these things happening in Arkham City. So what can she do? She's out for number one, so you know she's looking to see what she can get out of the situation. But it, seems, it would seem, right, you guys continue that, that, that kind of tinge of love relationship there, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely a spark between the two of them, however much either of them choose to acknowledge that, you know. And, um, but they both have these different kind of objectives, and that's what kind of makes them fascinating, is that you never quite know which side either of them are going to fall on, you know, when push comes to shove. Yeah. Oh, there we got some detective mode going on. What's so he looking for here? So this is a cool moment, basically, you saw in the cinematic before that uh, Joker's shot at Catwoman, tried to kill her. So what uh, Jez is doing here, he's actually tracking the two different bullet holes, and he's going to project from that bullet hole, oh, the those bullet holes, the trajectory, really cool. figure out where the bullet came from. Um, I've so got... you're going to see that the bullet was actually shot. Let's have a look. Somebody's sniping. Sniping from the top of a church bell tower. I've got a, I've got a question from Kobe Zero here that says, uh, any co-op multiplayer stuff that you talk about? So we, we looked at co-op multiplayer and we did think about it, but really what we wanted to focus on was telling the best Batman story we could tell. And we decided that, you know, to create this, to create Gotham City the way we wanted to create it, on the scale we wanted to create it, and with the amount of hours gameplay we wanted, that if we did multiplayer as well, it would just dilute that experience, you know? So. Our commitment is just to do one thing as well as we possibly can do it, and that was to deliver Arkham City. So there isn't any co-op or multiplayer, but trust me, the game's awesome. You're going to love what we did do. Awesome. That is a good place to end, sir. Stephen Hill, you are awesome. Thank you so much for coming by the stage. Batman, Arkham City, the game looks incredible. When, remind folks again when we're going to see this. Uh, it's out October 18th, over here October in the States. Right it's going to be a long wait, but uh, it looks like it'll be well worth it. Thank you again for coming by. I really Thanks. do appreciate it. Thanks Thank so much, Ryan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there you have it. Batman, Arkham City here on the E3 2011 live stage here uh, for GameSpot. We're going to go right now to take a look at the South Hall with Homer Ibarra, so take it away. Welcome back to our virtual tours, everybody. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the South Hall, regarded as the louder and crazier bigger brother to the West Hall. Let's see who's camped out there. Let's take a look at who and what will be on the floor in the South Hall. First up is Microsoft. Two hotly anticipated titles that will be at their booth are Gears of War 3 and Forza Motorsport 4. Be on the lookout.